So yeah, um, <clears throat> so yeah, I will, I will um, try to keep it short. Uh, I will try to. I wanted to talk about um, some work that we've been doing on. Um, I mean, while observing but also developing test automation tools, we looked at several challenges, trust challenges uh, like assigning responsibility, bias in decision making, and lack of participation. And we looked also at some, you know, approaches like explicability, supervision, and diversity. And I will just show you some of these results, um, 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 especially related biases in testing and test automation, coming from a survey that we've run with uh, Alex Kushmaru from Siemens. Um, and also at the end, I will provide a checklist to help guide the decision making, uh, hopefully. <laughs> um, and this is based on the work that uh, I've done with Per Erik Strandberg from Vestemo and. Mirgit Afrasheri from Orkus University, uh, which I should acknowledge uh, up front. Um, yeah, so test automation, I should, I mean, I don't have to, I guess, define it here, but I'll just mention that it's a common in software development. It often wants one test repeatedly to identify regressions. Um, so I overview here a generic uh, development test cycle. Um, so you have developers that are updating the system, then you have the test cases that are automated, uh, created manually, or if, you, if you're advanced enough, you can generate some of them. Then you have a regression test selection tool because you don't have time to execute all of them uh, because of resource constraints. So, and then um, uh, maybe it's, for example, I give you a case, you see it, hopefully you can see it with a red dotted line. So if a test case is not selected for testing, could uh, this that could have detected a flow, um, that could have led to a bug in the release software. So what happens then? So that's an interesting, uh, an interesting scenario, for example, that has, it's related to trust, uh, the trust that we put in, the, in, in this system. So the nature of this automated systems that we use in testing raises ethical trust concerns, um, and that's what we are actually uh, uh, looking for. So <clears throat> as opposed to some of the research that's related to test automation, um, we just work, I mean, to, a lot of the research focuses on, you know, test automation with poor quality and how to make it better. How, do, how can we actually make testing better? We're looking at unethical and untrust with test, the test automation. So it's a different perspective here. Um, so this could generate and select poorly, uh, you know, test cases uh, or biased data. You can have a poor understanding of the decision making. You as a human that uses this. Um, and is that a good decision that the system is doing? Um, or the, there is maybe an implementation problem because, I don't know, a stakeholder ha has not been involved during development. But here we just focus on some of them. So I show them on the, on the slide uh, in red with a question mark. Uh, so these are trust challenges, some of the trust challenges you can have, like bias, um, data bias, for example, responsibility, participation. Uh, but I want to take each uh, challenge one by one. Um, so responsibility, I mean, this relates to the what I call the invisibility factor. So the problem that one might not understand what the test automation is actually doing. Um, you can, of course, this could lead to abuse or it could be just biased. I mean, it's really intentional or not. Um, so if test automation is non-transparent and hits the reasons for decision, it will be difficult for developers or tester to take responsibility. Um, and this could be, you know, extrapolated to the whole organization. Um, um, and even if the test automation can explain some of the reasons, maybe the humans involved cannot keep up with the decisions because there are so many. Um, uh, uh, so the system, the test automation system can be uh, seen as opaque. I think I used that term even in some discussions before. Why test A is more important than test B? Um, yeah, so I, I think there are numerous examples of um, opacity. I think a lot of them come from aviation. There's a lot of research done there because you have major accidents that came from automation, which is automation surprises, because the operators were like, you know, uh, the, they had in, inappropriate feedback that leads to a certain, you know, uh, decision. 
Um, and, and there are different ways to deal with this. So I mentioned on the slide a couple of them, like uh, transparency, explicability. We're trying to log some internal states and dec decisions taken. Um, and in the end, you may you may want to um, avoid what's called error message blindness. So too little is displayed uh, for the user. Um, so, uh, and then you again have like, I don't know, it's hard even to, def to because of this, you, can, you, can, you have a difficulty assigning responsibility. Um, you have stakeholders blaming each other in the event of bad outcomes. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's something that I think uh, it's a challenge. Um, um, also, another challenge in testing and test automation is related to biases, uh, which are behaviors that influence um, testers, developers, but also automatic systems actions. Um, so yeah, so in a way it's affecting the test automation they're using. So some, I mean, there is a lot of research that has been done on cognitive biases and how they occur in, you know, control experiments and case studies that they, they, they're quite, there is quite a lot of research there. Um, even on Wikipedia, if you go, maybe I have the, the next slide. Yeah, so there is a lot of research here. And there, if you go in Wikipedia, you see over more, I think it's out of more of 200 identified biases in general, um, maybe some of them can be present in software engineering. I mean, not all of them. Um, and I think they, at least some of the papers I've, I've, I've checked, there were at least where, where we counted around 37 cognitive biases um, that were, uh, they were more present in, in software engineering and testing. Um, so we wanted to, I mean, the problem is that these biases impact testing, they can disrupt our work and compromise our, you know, sometimes the problem solving abilities. Um, but yeah, so what we did to gather more information, so together with Alex uh, from Siemens, we investigated the awareness of testers uh, and work, people that work with test automation or biases in their daily work. Uh, parts of this work has been actually presented last week in the Eurostar conference. Uh, so we created a questionnaire. Yeah, I uh, have animations. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Um, so we created a questionnaire and uh, as a way to explore and understand how uh, aware practitioners are of this. So we use a semi uh, I mean, a, um, uh, a, well, a structure survey with open-ended and closed-ended uh, questions. Um, and we used existing biases. So we mapped, we had the mapping between the, ex well, some, some biases that were present and also the, uh, in, in testing from the current literature. And um, uh, we, we developed some questions. But I will not present all the results here, but I, yeah, I don't know if this is quite important, but this is, um, I want to show here just that the people involved in this that responded to this uh, survey um, we're working with a diverse set of tasks in testing, um, including writing, writing automated scripts, uh, doing test analytics, uh, test framework development. So there is a, there are a lot of, I mean, people that work with test automation. Um, and even if, uh, I mean, we had 64 respondents, even if we had a small number of respondents, I think uh, um, we have a diverse crowd, let's say like this. So we have people that worked with uh, different type of testing. Um, yeah, so let, maybe let's just go for some, some interesting results here. So, um, um, so here we categorize the results in two, in two um, parts. One was statements regarding people which encounter bias, biases in their daily work. Uh, and then some of them are victims of some type of biases, like confirmation biases or happy path testing. Um, maybe some, some of them were victims of automating as much as they can um, uh, or having a victim of, 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 of using too many tools or having the um, preconception about testing. For example, testing does not add any value. Testing is the same as checking. Uh, testing is for programmers that cannot really code. Uh, is done by testers only. Um, testing increases quality. I think so, someone mentioned 
you, Marcus, you, you, you were mentioning this, um, or testing manually has no value. So I think these are all, I think, to some extent, preconceptions and uh, biases, but they're not really related to, I mean, not all of them are related to test automation. Uh, but I want to show some other results, the interesting observations uh, about the awareness. Our, our results has actually suggest that 87% of, of participants think that biases are a cause of concern in testing, uh, with 70% of our par participants actually recognizing that uh, testing their own, I mean, their own testing is is uh, is uh, is influenced. Um, so this is basically it's inescapable. But I guess being in an environment that uh, uh, takes you into enough random directions, maybe this would could be could be um, uh, influenced in a different way. Yeah. So um, we actually looked also for um, or, um, we looked at ownership bias. So uh, that relates. It's very much related to the IKEA effect, where you are actually you give too much weight to the things that you build or help in building. So we wanted to look at this in the case of writing new test cases. So we asked them when writing a new test case, either a test specification or test implementation, do you usually modify, adapt an existing test cases, a test case, or you write it from scratch? Um, and 64% uh, of the participants prefer to modify and adapt existing test cases, um, while the rest uh, write them from scratch. I mean, these are not, it's, they're, they're, this shows that there is a considerable amount of people that have a preference for this, but the results are just interesting, but not very conclusive. Um, I mean, there. Does, does it say more about the test cases than the test writers? It says something about the test writers but i guess it says it does about something it. about the test cases because they, someone writes them i mean yeah yeah, yeah but uh, if if your test case covering yeah. a very large scope and you have few test cases that covers large part of your problem mm. uh, then it's obviously so that you rewrite that test code mm. to cover an even larger scope or, or yeah or yeah something. yeah but if your test cases are, are very many Mm -hmm. very narrow focus, it's more natural to write next one also from scratch. Mm -hmm. So it, it depends on the size of your yeah. test case. Yeah, it, it depends also on the level of testing. Yeah, so yeah, I, I totally agree. I, I don't think the, the question is, so the question can be quite <laughs> um, uh, vague from that point of view, because you don't know why they did it. No, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, also, we, we asked them about it when using automated regression, do you usually rely solely on the results of your automated test suits? Um, so I think, uh, as you can see, I mean, there is a considerable amount of people that said uh, that yes, they, they rely solely on the results of their automated test suits, but some, I mean, I guess what I wanted to say is that even 26 of them, they, they, they say they know, so they use something else except their automated regression test suits like manual testing, exploratory testing. And then some of them, they don't use automated regression uh, at, all. Uh, at all, which That's is quite good. I mean, there are cases, I guess, um, where this... Uh... Yeah, just to be yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess they're, they're, yeah, there are a lot of... Well, some of the people from Software Center are, uh, answer this, so... <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I will leave that. Um, also, we that one thing that was interesting was uh, we asked them when implementing test cases, do you perform before or after the implementation of manual test execution? Um, in some cases, when you're testing, for example, the um, like the GUI interface, uh, you could also try to you know do it yourself manually in, in before or after the implementation of, of a test script. So 76% answered yes. Um, and you have 24% do not do such a manual execution or do not implement uh, test cases. Um, so some tests are try to counter some of the aspects related to relying on test automation, uh, but there are many other aspects that we don't have a full picture, so we don't, I wouldn't um, go too much into details. Um, yeah, so, so I went through the responsibility 
uh, challenge. Then I mentioned a couple of problems related to bias. Um, maybe one thing that I wanted to mention was regarding lack of participation. And uh, imagine that you have a large scale uh, software test automation system in place. You have test, well, in some cases you can have test generation, but in most cases you have manually created test scripts, but you do some type of automatic selection uh, with some test budget allocation. Um, in some cases you have competing values among projects who takes responsibility, who wants to take more budget. Um, you have maybe, uh, I mean, there are many, I guess, parallel projects competing over the same resources. So the common and shared goal of selecting a good set of test cases for testing might, might expand to, you know, to, 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 to include the task of distributing test resources between departments. Uh, so then there are conflicting values interest, uh, that are interesting between stakeholders. So you need to make sure, I mean, this could be a problem because you may have to think of a company in the loop or not just human in the loop perspective here. And in some cases, this um, is not that easy. So maybe involving various stakeholders in your the development of your system could be useful. Um, so that's another. So yeah, maybe I can, uh, I will finish with this. Um, so we talked so far about three challenges. Who takes responsibility for bad decisions, uh, biases, and lack of participation? Uh, but there are guidelines on how to actually deal with some of these challenges. For example, explicability and trans uh, transparency is targeting responsibility. Um, so being able to explain as to why certain decisions are taken, that's quite important. Um, so maybe having a human in the loop or human on the loop, that could help. Uh, for biases, sometimes it's quite good to have supervision and try to make sure that uh, there is some type of training uh, done. Um, for example, we also in the in the survey, but I didn't uh, show anything about that. We show we we saw that uh, um, people actually create quite a lot of positive test cases, you know, test cases that confirm some type of, uh, you know, positive, happy testing path. Um, um, and not too many test cases that created to, you know, crash the system or do something uh, to it. Um, and, and that's something that can be uh, fixed, I guess, with some training. And it's sometimes good to test also that the system works, not only that it doesn't work. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Sometimes we forget yeah. About, so yeah. the workability as well. Yeah. So there are two parts of testing: one checking, yes. the other one, you know, trying the, to the produce and the, find, yeah. finding bugs. Yeah. Um, so there, there is a. I'm not saying it's bad to have positive test cases. Just saying that uh, there is some confirmation bias that you have too many positive test cases sometimes, and then you cannot actually schedule the the test cases that you would like to find bugs because of the that. Um, but yeah, so there is also what diversity. That's one approach for lack of participation. Trying to, you know, um, that's an approach for avoiding that. Um, yeah, so we actually tried to develop this checklist for more trustworthy test automation. Um, so uh, these are questions that any, I mean, company should, I guess, possibly look into how are humans in control of their test automation? Um, how do uh, the system explain its results to a human? How are the decisions actually logged? And what are, when it, when you have a malfunction, how do you um, lo uh, log these decisions and how do you make sure um, that you know what's the problem? Um, when, uh, when the system is underperforming, um how do you know what's happening um yeah maybe there is some type of risk analysis that can be done to make sure that uh, um um you're you, also for developing the test automation framework itself um yeah so there are other questions like uh impact of decisions monitored how do you what are the how do you monitor the decisions? Maybe some there are some stakeholders that are not taken into account when you develop this uh, system, and how to I mean what is the impact on human performance? 
Um, so there, there are a couple of questions that are interesting. Um, yeah, if you want to read more, I think there are two papers. Well, there's one paper and one talk um, that can be found, I think, online. Um, so you can find more details about this in, in these papers. Um, yeah, and I'm done. A, a, a quick question. I wasn't yeah. so I don't know if you talked about it in the beginning, but have you, have you done any uh, comparison between 